Jeremy here, and thanks for tuning in to another video about hempcrete structures here in Australia. This is a very exciting video to be making, as it's the third about this hempcrete structure behind me. The first of which was made a little bit more than a year ago from the filming of this footage, and kicked off the hempcrete in Australia series that I made over the subsequent year. So I'm looking forward to heading down to the house and chatting to Ash and Jared, the lovely couple who has made these amazing hempcrete structures here at the Simple Patch, having a bit of a chat and having a look around the house. Let's go. So far, all these videos are completed in my own time with no financial reward. So if you can like, comment and subscribe, this really helps me keep motivated and also helps get these videos out to a wider audience so we can build the knowledge and hemp community and sequester more carbon from our atmosphere. You can go back and watch the other videos about this house, like episode one of season one of Hempcrete in Australia, which kicked off a mini tour of hemp building in northern New South Wales. Just follow the link in the description or click around this channel. Now, diving in, just a quick FYI, this will be a slightly longer video featuring a lovely talk by Ash and Jared, the owner builders, and specific information about what makes this house such a great example of a super sustainable design and high end off grid living. So I'd appreciate it if you stuck around to the end. So here I am back in Wingham at the Simple Patch to see this finished Hempcrete family home and have a chat with the lovely couple, Ash and Jared, who have worked so hard over the years to build their first Hempcrete cottage and now the Hempcrete family home. Ash and Jared were keen to show that there's a different way to build family homes, one that has less of an impact on the environment during building and throughout the life cycle of the structure, which should be around for hundreds of years. And whilst it's hard to calculate exactly, most hempcrete structures are very close to carbon neutral and even carbon negative, meaning they store more carbon in the structure than was generated throughout the building process. Additionally, due to the high performance of the insulation, plus the passive house design principles of the structure, very minimal carbon, if any, will be released for thermally controlling, as in heating or cooling, the internal spaces of the structure. I hope I haven't lost you there with too much sustainability jargon. So before I move on to the nitty gritty details of this house, why don't we hear from the owner builders, Ash and Jared themselves. Here's the interview. Well, here I am inside this finished amazing family home. Here's the lovely couple, Ash and Jared. So how's the experience been so far? It's been an awesome experience. I think being able to be involved in so much of their house design and process it feels like the house is just an extension of me and Jared. yeah and that's been the whole part of it being able to design it go through the process of building it and living it and now we're getting all the experiences that we wanted connected to nature and more importantly connected to our young family yeah but it's really comfy living inside the house. The air quality is really clean and really good. The temperature stays really consistent through winter and summer. I'm not somebody to wear t-shirts year round and yet inside I am nowadays, which is a big change. And it's yeah. nice to take off the coats and jumpers when you come inside and just... <laughs> it's just a matter of now remembering to check the weather early in the morning to go, oh, we do need that jumper before we go outside. It isn't toasty outside yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you really feel the uh, thermal mass soaking up that sun and regulating the temperatures? Yeah, very much. So the thermal mass, yeah, regulating the temperature, the insulation allowing it to stay stable as well. Um, so that we can get those stabilities of comfort um, throughout every yeah. hour of the day. Yeah. So how did the building process go? Yeah, well, it's, you know, a different process than going to your local big housing home and land package. But the differences that came through that was that we'd be able to create our home that reflected me and Jared. It's, we were able to buy the sink that we wanted um, at the price that we wanted. Yeah. <laughs> um, you, we were able to pick the builder and have that insurance that the cost we were paying our builder were going directly into our home. And along the way, we were able to work with him if there was any questions on how are you going to hang the curtains or we were able to get his advice and 
tailor it without getting additional costs or add-ons yeah. along the way. Um, we met great people along the way that helped us in the build from our architect to the builder, obviously. <laughs> um, but then also people in the community that helped us come here and put up the hemp creek walls. I think it was really rewarding community-wise with the hemp creating that it is open to all access levels. So we had helpers here who were in their teenage years all the way through to their 70s. And I think it just opens up the field, especially to women to be able to be part of the building process. And I think we see it as such an empowering thing that society has lost over generations where everyone used to be able to build their home and build their family's homes. Whereas now it's much more palmed off of, you need a builder, you need this, you need that. Which you do for the structure stuff, but the hempcrete allows you to do the walls and have that community of meeting everyone. I think you can be involved in it however much you do or don't want to be. It doesn't have to be very different to your standard house build. You can get a pre-designed hempcrete homes now. Um, or you can take that extra step and be more involved. It's really flexible and up to you on how much you want to spend or not spend on it and finishing the spend. Um, I think it was an amazing experience, an amazing journey, memories that we'll always have and friendships that we'll have for years to come have come out of it. And I think that's what I, makes it a home instead of just a house. As with the cottage, Ash and Jared provided much of the design concepts in a very specific design brief for this house to Kirsty Wolf of Shelter Building Design. Kirsty helped put the final touches and get it through to council development application and construction certificate approvals. Quite a few years ago now, Ash and Jared attended a talk by Kirsty, which led them to do a hands-on course in hempcrete building. This was in the early stages of hemp building in Australia, and the industry has come a long way since then but every industry is always innovating to refine techniques. With the hemp building industry currently in a mini boom state, with upwards of 400 completed structures around Australia, including significant architectural pieces like this family home that provide a concrete, oops, sorry, hempcrete example of how houses should be built around Australia and indeed around the world. This is an extremely poignant era of human-caused climate change. An alternative to the sprawling, badly designed, as far as sustainability standard goes, volume builder housing estates where bush is cleared to put up concrete boxes with black roofs and air conditioning pumping just to achieve a comfortable internal temperature on an average Aussie day. Ash and Jared did all the project management with Ash focusing on design and Jared doing a lot of the non-structural building. But they both worked together as an amazing team during planning, design, building, hemping, painting and much more to create this amazing family home for themselves and their two children. They've created a legacy in sustainable building that is an example of how things can be done, how things should be done, so that we have high-end housing that will limit the amount of carbon released during the building and for the 300 years and probably much more that this house will be a home to humans for generations to come. Now, let's look at some of the super cool innovations and features that take this build to the next level. Let's start from the bottom with the concrete slab. There was going to be a similar amount of concrete to do piers versus a concrete slab. So Ash and Jared went for a slab. The concrete slab creates a fantastic thermal mass. It's not polished concrete per se, but it's sealed and has a nice finish that facilitates cleaning. If it was polished concrete, then it would have used an extra capping layer and more materials. Next, we'll examine the orientation and eaves. The orientation and eaves of a structure is a very important design feature. This lets in natural light and controls warmth from the sun naturally. In summer, when the sun is high in the sky, the sun is blocked from entering the house. In winter, when the sun is low in the sky, it streams through the large north-facing windows to warm up the house and importantly the concrete slab, which releases that heat back into the house long after the sun has set. Next up, we'll look into the clear story windows. We can see the clear story windows, which not only let in a lovely light to light up the house through the day, but are also operable so as to be able to release any heat that may build up on summer days. 
that can occasionally reach to 40 degrees Celsius. They create a kind of chimney effect where any heat that rises up into the house will exit through these operable louvre windows. Sealing of internal hempcrete feature walls. Rock coat repel, which seals the wall naturally, is breathable and retains the natural colours and organic grain, which complement the organic design palette. It's kind of like off-form concrete, but more natural. Hempcrete. Rendered internal walls. The internal walls were finished with a natural clay render to make them a little bit more robust in the kids' and guest rooms. And how about this awesome cooling tube for the pantry? This cooling tube draws air into it, which is cooled by passing through the ground and then cools the pantry right next to the kitchen. There is a vent at the top of the pantry that lets the hot air out. So it's a cool, dark place to store produce, always a few degrees cooler than the house, with the pantry door closed to maintain this temperature, naturally, with no use of fossil fuels. Now let's look at the water tank. This massive water tank is specified in line with local regulations to provide water for the four-bedroom household based on rainfall predictions. An additional 20,000 litres is stored so that the Rural Fire Brigade has access to water on the property in case of bushfires. Human waste. This worm septic tank captures and processes all the human waste with the treated liquid pumped to an absorption zone a specific distance from the house. This system is smaller than the traditional septic tank and requires less maintenance. Off-grid solar power. A little apology here as I didn't get a huge amount of detail regarding the solar system or the kitchen and other appliances, but we can see here solar panels on the north facing roof and there is, of course, a battery pack somewhere. And the system uses this little controller, which also monitors the weather, including internal and external temperature. At 5.48 p.m., we can see the temperature outside has dropped to 18 degrees, while inside it's a steady 23 degrees. Yeah. And it kicked off the Hempcrete in Australia series that I made. And the first footage was filmed about a bit more than a year ago from the filming of this footage. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's try again. Well, that wraps it up for this episode. If you haven't checked out season one, click this link or the one in the description. And of course, if you have enjoyed this video, a like and a positive comment or question will help it get to more people interested in sustainable building. A big thank you for watching all the way to the end and best wishes on your particular sustainable journey. My name is Jeremy Thomas. Ciao for now.